when we were young, some of us that was further back than others, we all had dreams and aspirations. And even now, if you ask a, a child of five, six, ten, what do you want to be when you grow up? I want to be an astronaut, a fireman, a teacher, a policeman, a soldier. No one ever wants to be a, you know, I want to work at an IGA. There's nothing working, wrong with working at IGA, but no one kind of aspires to that as their highest goal in life. It's always something which it is very high normally, or some, some great, uh, a role of, has a particular, almost a vocational type calling. As life goes on, and these dreams and aspirations remain for a while until we grow old enough to realize that it's not quite as easy as just wanting it, as just desiring it. There are obstacles. If you want to be an astronaut, for example, you've got to become at least an American citizen, if not some other kind of citizen, because there's no uh, program for Australian citizens, just in case you're ever, anyone here was thinking of doing that. If you want to become a soldier, you need a reasonable amount of health. If you don't have that, then you can't enter the, uh, the military service. If you want to become a lawyer, or a, I don't know if anyone aspires to a lawyer when they're young, but a doctor at least, you need to have a reasonable amount of, of intelligence or at least a way, uh, an ability to study. And so we come across these obstacles, it becomes difficult. We realize our weaknesses, our failings, and often we give up. Often we say, well, maybe I can't be an astronaut and maybe I can't be a pilot. Maybe I'll just start making model airplanes. There's nothing wrong with model airplanes, but it's not quite the same thing as, as soaring through the sky. The similar thing happens in our spiritual life. When we have either have a conversion or we come to know the faith or when we first enter religious life, we are full of desires and zeal. I will become a saint. I will become a martyr. I will give up everything. I will suffer. I will do penance. I'll fast. I'll do all these things. I'll pray all the time. I'll keep God in my mind all the time. And then as time goes on, you start to realize how weak and pathetic you really are. We really are. You start to realize that it's actually difficult, that it takes effort, just as it takes effort to become a doctor of lots of study, six years at least. And so it is to become holy, it takes effort. And dare I say often, certainly sometimes, we give up. It's too hard, this holy thing, this saintly thing. It's hard. I tell you what, I'm just going to settle... I'm just I'm going to go to Mass every week, every Sunday. That's good. That's good. That's the minimum, though, we are supposed to be doing. Going to Mass, it is an end in itself. It's a, in the sense of adoring God through the sacrifice of the Mass. But it's also a means to an end. It's a means for us to become holy. It's a means that we live out the rest of our week in uh, the way which we desired to at one stage in our life. I hope at least at one stage in our life we have desired that. And so when we contemplate these things, the fact that what we desired at one stage, and especially from the point of view of religious, when you enter, you're full of this zeal and this idealism, a good idealism of doing these things, and then time goes on, reality, that is the reality of original sin of our weakness sets in, and we think all of a sudden uh, those things were, that was the thoughts of a child, it's not possible anymore. We're actually in trouble. Because while it might not be possible for us to be pilots because we're too tall or our eyesight's bad, it is possible for every single person to become a saint. It's possible. And it's even probable if we do as our Lord asks. It's not. It's nowhere near being impossible because God wills it. Therefore, it is right there waiting for us. And so while we may have to just be happy with making model aeroplanes, we never have to be happy with just looking at holy cards. We can have our own holy card, although we may never be canonized. I wouldn't start making your own holy cards before you die. But we can certainly achieve sanctity. What is sanctity? Conformity with God's will on earth. What is God's will? Simply his commandments. Love him above all things and love your neighbor as yourself. It's like that. Not easy but simple. As we progress, uh, as we go on, and as time passes in the spiritual life, where we may realize that we've lost that, uh, you know, we haven't quite lived up to those desires, and we've lost that zeal, 
we may think, you know what, I don't know if it's possible. I don't think it's possible. I've tried and I failed. I've tried and I failed. When I go to confession, please let you go to confession. When I go to confession, I keep confessing the same sins. There's no change in me. That might be the case. But that's the first step, to recognize that there's a problem here. Often we get just stuck in that rut and we don't, 20 years might go past, we haven't recognized that we haven't actually moved anywhere. So how is it possible? It's possible because God became man. It's possible because the God who became man took a mother and he gave that mother to us. The secret to holiness, the quickest way to holiness is through the mother of God. That's the way it is. That's the way God made it. That's not an opinion. That's just the way it is. Certainly the great Marian saints, St. Maximilian, saw that very, very clearly, but not only him. It is through her that God came to us. God chose her as the means by which he would reveal himself to the world. He chose her to be the means by which he would bring redemption to the world, the means by which he would offer salvation to the world through her, by her flesh that he took. And so it is through her again that we can find our way back to him. She is the most perfect of mothers. All she wants to do is get us to heaven. She has two desires in life. And her life at this point, of course, is eternal. To love and adore God and help us love and adore God. That's it. That's a whole role. It's a bit like a, a wife and mother. She loves her husband and she wants her children to love her husband, their, their father. She is the mediatrix of all graces, as the church names her, even in the the latest document of the Second Vatican Council, Lumen Gentium, for those who are familiar with the document. She's named as the mediatrix of all graces, of all graces. She goes to her son, her son who is God today, the mother of God. He is God. And she says, we are positive. I want not just salvation for your children, for those you redeemed, I want sanctification. Jesus doesn't say, well, I can't be bothered with that. He never, ever, can you imagine a good son saying that to his mother? You know, we as bad sons might have said that to our mothers at some point. Mom, leave me alone, I haven't got time. Jesus never says that, he's got lots of time. He's outside of time. Sure, mother, here. Here are the graces. Take them, give them to whomever you please. And she pleases to give them to all of us. She has this whole basket full of graces for our sanctification. Thank you for our holiness. But she will not force them upon us, of course. She comes to each one of us and says, take these graces, become holy. Look at what my son has done for you. Stop wasting time. Stop becoming discouraged. Here I am. My son has sent me to you as an advocate. I am the means that you will find your way back to him. Therefore, it is not, it's never God's fault that he hasn't given us enough. It's never Our Lady's fault that she hasn't helped us enough. Unfortunately, ultimately, it's our lack of cooperation, even our lack of gratefulness to those things that are offered to us from God through Our Lady. New Year's is one of those times, traditionally, where we make resolutions. Strictly speaking, in the Christian life, in the proper prayer life, we should be making resolutions every day or renewing them every day. But New Year's is a time where we're all thinking about, I'm going to make a resolution. Often it's a time people quit, they, they promise to quit smoking or stop drinking or stop swearing or stop gambling, all these bad things that you're supposed to stop anyway. It's like people giving up sinful habits during, during Lent. It's like, it's good, but you're supposed to give them up all the time, not just during Lent. Um... But it's also a moment where we make some resolutions to become holy. Holiness is your vocation. It is our vocation. That's scriptural. You are called to holiness. Let's make 2015 holy. How do we do it? Go to the mother of God. Use the means that she's asked us to use. 
use the, the sacraments of the church. There is no holiness without the sacraments. You know that. There's no heaven without baptism, one of the three baptisms, at least one of them. You need baptism to get to heaven. Christ made that very clear. Uh, you know, it is without, there is no heaven without the blessed sacrament. Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, there can be no life within you. And we need the sacrament of confession to help us grow in that sanctifying grace. Even if you know you haven't killed anyone recently or any grave sins, it is a gift. It is a gift which increases that grace that God has already given us and adds to it with the sacramental grace. If we are serious about becoming holy, if we are serious of uh, heeding God's call to holiness, it's God who's called us to holiness, not just me, then we need to use these means. And if we struggle to prepare ourselves well for Mass, if we struggle to prepare ourselves well for, whole, um, for, for confession, go to Our Lady. And even if you don't struggle, go to her anyway, because she'll help you to do it better. She will prepare you. Pray the prayers that she's asked us to pray. The Holy Rosary, for example. It always amazes me. It's a funny, the Rosary. It can seem like, oh, the Rosary. I think that's because it's probably so powerful the, the enemy of the soul tries to dissuade us or it could just be because we're lazy. 15 to 20 minutes to pray a rosary. And you can, God is so good that he said, look, you can even split it up into three and a half minute lots. Is it really that hard to meditate in the life of our Lord and our Lady so that we might love him better, so that we might actually become what we are supposed to be? We are called to be saints not just for our sake, but for the sake of each and every person on this planet. And therefore, not uh, cooperating, not accepting the graces that God is offering us so freely, so generously, is not just a possible, possibly, slothness or laziness, but it's also a lack of charity for the rest of the world. And let alone our own families. How many of us have family members whom we, if we had hair, would tear our hair over? Because they're not living the life that we know they should, that we know they need to if they want to be happy in this world and happy in the next. Let us, therefore, not let another year go by. Let us not let another day go by without making the firm proposal that this year will be different. Not the kind of proposal that after a week, like, I'm just going to start smoking again, it's too hard. I'll just, give, I'll just fall back into my old routines. No. Pick up something new this year. Start putting time aside to pray each day. Silent time. Whatever it might be, in the morning or in the evening, somewhere. Do something to improve your relationship with God. But do it through Our Lady because she is the only way. Whether we use her or not, she's still the only way. Let us take Mary, the mother of God, as our mother. That's what Jesus Christ has asked of us. Take her as your mother. We know that we are called to imitate Christ. And we know the first thing he did when he was incarnate was to take Mary as his mother. So we, as his brothers, we who are called to imitate him, do the same. Let us never be afraid to call Mary mother. Let us rather be afraid to forget her. Let us, bring, let us hide ourselves in her heart so she may place us in his heart where we may truly glorify God. Where we may find holiness and bring many souls to salvation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.